Hi, um, thanks to everybody for coming out. This is fantastic. Uh, before I get started, I want to tell a strange story that just happened to me. So, I wore uh, a San Francisco 49ers t-shirt that I bought in Tucson, Arizona a couple of years ago, because I sort of wanted to win everybody's favor. And uh, you can obviously tell I'm not wearing it. I was at the Golden Cane Bar yeah. before I came over here. Some cheers for that. And uh, someone offered me $10 to switch shirts. <laughs> and I took it. And I took it. <laughs> So that's why I'm wearing this shirt today instead of the San Francisco 49er. It was a vintage one, like it had the, it was the old logo with the gold helmet. And um, so he was the guy who was really enamored to get the shirt, so I made the trade. So that's why I'm wearing this shirt and not the Niner's shirt. So I just thought I'd share that with everybody. So I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be in Northern California, but I wanted to let everyone know that I live in Los Angeles. <laughs> I am shocked that I heard one person. I heard you clapping. <laughs> Did you road trip it up here? Like, what? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm very, very surprised. So the last time I was up here, I did, I did a talk at Google, and it was on YouTube. So if any of you have seen, um, have seen that, there's a little bit of overlap from what I'm going to talk about tonight. So basically, I'm just going to tell you sort of the inside story about how this thing that started literally as a joke with me and my friend Miles turned into this book, and sort of just traced the sort of ridiculous path. So, on January 18th of this year, uh, I'm going to repeat that date a lot as I start to go through the story. So on January 18th of this year, my friend Miles and I were talking over Instant Messenger about the TV show The Wire, and yeah. number 85 in here, don't worry. <laughs> um, we're both huge, huge fans of the show, and so Miles, who's still a Pino, it becomes relevant uh, later on. It's actually relevant right now. He wrote post number 11 on Asian girls. <laughs> it's fully credited in the book, credited on the website, so if any of you came here to punch me or, uh, you know, anything along those lines, it wasn't me that wrote it. It was Miles Valentin, a proud Filipino-Canadian. Um, so we were talking back and forth about the show. We both huge, huge fans. So Miles said he didn't trust any white person who didn't watch the show. And, and then we just started going back and forth saying, well, what are they doing instead of watching this show? And we came up with things like, oh, uh, they're going to plays, they're going to yoga, <laughs> they're getting divorced. And I thought, to me it was just so funny the idea that someone was too busy getting divorced to watch a TV show, that I said, all right, that's hilarious, it's blog time. So I went to WordPress.com, and like literally a million other people, I didn't even think about this for a second, I just typed in, Stuff white people like .wordpress.com, and started writing. And not even in the back of my head did I ever think any of this would happen. So you know, sometimes you buy a lottery ticket, and you sort of think, it wouldn't be awesome if I if I won the lottery and I had all this, you know, all this money. It wasn't even there in the back of my head. It was I just wanted a side project to write something funny, and that was it. And so I started writing with Miles. He wrote a few, but I guess I had more built up rage, and so I was writing more. And more. <laughs> I just had so many more of them to get out than Miles. And when it got to about number 20, I thought, all right, this is really, this is really funny. I'm going to send it to all of my friends. And that literally meant 25 people. Like that's, that is the full, that was the full roster of friends that I had, and they're not influential friends. I mean, this is the, I, these are former graduate students, uh, just regular people in Toronto and Montreal. And so I just sent it to them thinking it would be pretty funny. And then something really interesting happened. A few days later, they would send me these long, long email chains that had started after they sent it. Some people saying, this is awful, and other people saying, this is the funniest thing I've ever read, and just these huge fights. And then the best one was people were accusing people who weren't white of being the whitest person they know. <laughs> and so, but from there, what happened was those people started forwarding on the site to more and more people. And so, from, literally from these 20 friends, this was the seed of the whole thing, it kept growing. And so I think I sent it out to them at the end of January. So by February, it was picked up by the blog for Good Magazine, of course, right? And, um, and Comedy Central. And I was so shocked. I was like, I can't believe this. We went from you know, 30 hits a day, which were mostly misguided searches, to, <laughs> to 30,000 in one day. And I couldn't believe this. 30,000 hits in a single day. And I was like, can't get any bigger than this. You know, it was a fantastic thing that it got mentioned on Comedy Central. Good, that's awesome. 
And then it just kept growing and growing and growing. People kept writing about it on their blogs and forwarding it along over IM. And then it kept getting into progressively bigger media. So the LA Times did a story on the site, the Houston Chronicle, um, the Baltimore Sun. And it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And every day I kept thinking, it can't get any, it can't get any larger. And it went from 30,000 to 80,000 to 100,000 to 300,000. And then in early March, it peaked at 800,000 hits in a single day. We beat the CNN site on the little WordPress <laughs> And we beat the LOL Cats guys. <laughs> they are, they're actually, I, I met them at a conference. They're fantastic. They're really, really funny. But it was unbelievable. This whole thing had started. It had literally started just as a joke. And then there were 800,000 people checking out the site in a single day. So in February, Another interesting thing happened was literary agents started contacting me through the website. So there's an email address on the site, stuffwhitepeoplelike at gmail.com. And literary agents were like, we think we can turn this into a book. And I'm, I'm floored at this point. I want to stress again, January 18th, 2008, I start a site as a joke. In the middle of February, I have literary agents, like many of them, emailing me, trying to get me to sign with them to turn it into a book. So I had to choose one. And when it came down to choosing a literary agency, since I live in Los Angeles, I wanted to have an agent, agency in Los Angeles. So that meant picking from the big talent agencies in Hollywood. So there's five of them. And four of the five contacted me to, rep, to be repped by them. The one that didn't was uh, ICM, if any of you follow the entertainment industry. And so I took a day off of work. And uh, I don't, uh, we have, so I don't know where Jess is. I'm, I'm married and we have a Prius. I can't drive it because I'm not insured because I didn't get my license until I was 26. But the way I get around LA is I ride a bicycle. <laughs> a fixed gear bicycle. Is anybody surprised? <laughs> anybody at all surprised? Um, and in the question and answer period, don't ask me questions about the bicycle because it will go on for like an hour and a half. There's so much stuff to talk about. So I took a day off work and I biked up to Beverly Hills from Culver City to meet with all these agents. I mean, I still can't believe this is February and I'm still so shocked this is happening. So one of the agencies I met with was CAA and CAA is sort of like the big, the most powerful talent agency in, you know, they're, they're frightening. And they have a building that's nicknamed the Death Star. It's actually, they, they're proud that it's called the Death Star. And it's on a street in LA called Avenue of the Stars. Can you believe that? A talent agency? And so they have this big circular driveway. And so I biked up there. And there's nowhere to lock your bike up. Like there's no parking meters around there. There's no street signs. There's nothing. All there are is Bentleys and Hummers. And I'm frightened that I'm going to scratch them. You know what I mean? Like I, I, you know, I, I'm so scared. So I get inside. There's nowhere to lock it up. So I have to bring my bike into the agency. And they have marble floors. <laughs> and this, I'm in there for less than five seconds before some security guards like, lift that bike up. Get it off the floor. So I have to lift the bike up off the floor on my shoulder. And I get to the front desk. And CAA is entirely designed to make you feel like you're not supposed to go upstairs. You know what I mean? So it's this really high lobby saying, you're not supposed to go up there. And I get to the front desk. And they think that I'm a courier. <laughs> And that felt pretty good. I was like, no, actually, I, have, I, have a, I actually have a meeting here. And then um, the other one is I went to uh, a different agency. And so I've said this before, that one of my mortal enemies in the world is tall guys. Like any guy over six feet tall, I don't care who you are, you've had an easier life than me. <laughs> my whole life, if I were literally four inches taller, everything would have been different throughout my entire life. So I have a long-standing anger towards tall guys. So I was in, I was in, um, in this agency. And I come in with my bike, and you know I have a helmet and a backpack, and I just look like an idiot. And I look over to my right, and there's about four guys, and all these guys I can already tell are like six three. You know what I mean? Like that perfect height. They're not like freakishly tall, but just tall enough to be intimidating. And they have pre-faded jeans. You know what I mean? Like the ones you buy that are faded in advance. Expensive shoes. They have like Ed Hardy T-shirts and blazers. You know what I mean? And then the worst is they have this most perfect stubble I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so I, I've grown this beard, and I love, I, love, I, I love this beard. It's the source of all my powers. But I can't, I can't connect it. Like, you can sort of see, like, here. It doesn't, it doesn't fill in. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. But these guys, it was, like, perfectly filled in. You know what I mean? It was, like, everything. It was perfect stubble. And they